What's going on? This is Alan Brown, aka Bullet the Kid. And today I have a very unique bass. It's very unique to me. Uh, this bass is not actually owned by me. This is from a man SD. Uh, this is the second time some of his equipment has been on my channel. Uh, but he was telling me about this bass. And I was like, man, that's really cool. If I could get a chance to get my hands on it, I'd love to play around with it, play with it and stuff. So uh, let me tell you about this bass. Uh, this bass is pretty much a one-off. It was commissioned uh, by a man by the name of Stephen Wishnitsky. A wish, Stephen Wishnevsky. Uh, and he is the luthier for Wish Basses. Uh, this is a fretless bass. The headstock is extremely unique. You know, uh, another thing that you notice directly about this is um, it's it's a nice looking bass. It's perfect, but it's like imperfect, and that kind of gives it its its charm. Uh, first thing, whenever you pick it up, it actually weighs probably like maybe you know 10 to 11 pounds or so. So it's a really solid piece of you know wood. Uh, interesting thing about this bass is if you look at it, there's no truss rod adjustment anywhere on this bass. So basically, they took. Uh, one piece of wood and then inverted it and flipped it over and then stuck it together so rather than have a uh, truss rod to align the neck the uh, wood grains are opposing each other forcing them to be straight which is really interesting I think that's a technique they used to do back in the 60s or 70s or so before they started adding truss rod adjustment and stuff like that but um, that's a definite thing about this bass it's like it has so much character like um, has a bone nut and uh, it has these flat round strings on it and uh, the owner SD told me that he hasn't changed the strings in eight years and I think they sound fine so for those that think they need to swap their strings out you know every few weeks or every few months if he gives you the sound that you're looking for and you're not breaking strings keep them on there like so for this one it's really really mellow really warm I'll play it a little bit later but uh, right now I'm just talking about it so uh, as you can see it's a fretless bass there are no markers on it and the fretboard goes directly up to the pickup so it actually has this is one up to the 12th fret and then here up to the 24th fret and then a few more frets beyond that like it's crazy so the I'm not even sure how you would play in this area probably just tap or whatever but um, it's crazy man uh, the neck itself is extremely chunky like it's really thick it's a like a baseball bat and I think this is a a uh, five ply neck and um, this is a spalted ambrosia spalted maple top I think I got that right I think I said that right and I think this is uh, heart string or heart wood fretboard a heart string something like that I forget what he said I should have wrote it down but um, it's not your normal rosewood fingerboard uh, it's actually a harder wood so if y'all know what, what I'm talking about what I'm alluding to Go ahead and put it in the comments. But um, yeah, so this is a Wish bass, and this is number 49. It actually is burned in there. This is number 49. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's right there. So the 49th bass Mr. Wishnevsky created is this one. And he got this one created specifically for him on his taste, what he likes. So, um, but yeah, man, the headstock, that's crazy like the headstock itself is wild I've never seen anything like it trying to find a um, gig bag or a case for this would be a nightmare but luckily he had a case constructed for this base so um, it works out so whenever I actually start playing this thing you're gonna hear a hum and if you have like headphones on or whatever that's because this is a single coil pickup and it's only one pickup in it has a volume and a tone 
he doesn't know if the tone circuit actually works in this bass he doesn't hear much difference but it sounds good how it is so um, yeah so basically it's uh, wired up like a P bass and he just he loves it so I like it too it's different and then the bridge is this same material as the nut that's in there so it gives a very interesting sound string through the body it's pretty crazy but uh, enough talking let me uh, actually get into what this thing sounds like so let me turn it up and I'll switch to the direct audio now You know I gotta do it, right? I apologize, SD, but if I got a bass, definitely gonna slap on it. So this is what it sounds like. So yeah, woo! I was really nervous about breaking the string. So, um, slapping on this bass, as you've seen, it's extremely hard to get to this G string because there's a fretboard in the way. And uh, where my hand naturally hit, I could not get under it to save my life. So 
if I had this bass, then that'd be something I'd be working on. But I don't think fretless basses are made for slapping like I just did. So, but I slap every bass. So, so here we go. But yeah, uh, this was a quick little video or whatever, and uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, if y'all got any comments, anything y'all want to say, anything y'all want to ask, uh, hit me in the comments. Until next time, y'all be easy.